nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Jurassic fucking Park. When this film came out, people went nuts. Not only did it have groundbreaking CGI effects, but it had action-packed suspense, a sense of awe and wonder, and just seemed gigantic. So when it was re-released in 3D recently, you bet your ass I got over to the theater to relive all those awesome memories. And how did it hold up? It was awesome! Not as awesome as I remember. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. Far from it. If anything, it's held up extraordinarily well. I'm just saying that while we were so blown away by how huge it was, we might have overlooked some problems that we either didn't see or chose to ignore. I know something like Jurassic Park 3 is worse, and trust me, we'll get to that train wreck in our time, but it's still an interesting journey looking back at something that was so groundbreaking and popular without the nostalgia goggles. So, let's take a look at an adventure 65 million years in the making, or... 3. This is Jurassic Park! So we start out in Spielberg's favorite place to go in all of his movies, Spotlight Fetish Land. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but this guy is obsessed with shining spotlights in your face as much as humanly possible. Every frame feels like a whimsical police interrogation. They try to transport one of the highly intelligent raptors via portal cube, when of course, something goes wrong. Now, was there really no other way to get these things into their cages? Brute force doesn't do much compared to common sense. I mean, look at the forklift. They could lift it just a little bit higher and boom, drop it in. Or tranquilizers, why not tranquilizers? Couldn't they just knock these things out and then slip them in that way? Or were the raptors too smart for that plan? Shoot ha! <laughs> Run away in comedic fashion. <laughs> So they lose one of the workers in the attack as we cut to the prettiest, mullet-obsessed paleontologist to roam the Earth. They're led by Dr. Grant, played by I Swear I'm Not a New Zealander, Sam Neill. Look at the half-moon shape. You wanna have one of those? A flock of birds evading a predator. And Dr. Settler, his girl... Fian... Fuck, buddy. Played by Laura Dern, who seems to always suffer from terminal mumbling. Did she eat an ice cream scoop of peanut butter before coming to the set? Well, maybe dinosaurs have more in common with present day birds than they do with reptiles. Look at the vertebrae, full of air sacs and hollows, just like a bird. And even the word raptor means bird of prey. Raptors were very aware of this when they were naming themselves. That doesn't look very scary. More like a six-foot turkey. A turkey, huh? Oh, no. So he scares the little kid by showing him something he never thought he'd see on a hunt for dinosaur bones. A dinosaur bone! Ah! You want to have one of those? I don't want that kid, but a breed of child Dr. Grant could be intriguing. But the work is interrupted by John Hammond. Blow me blood pipes! who offers to fund their dig further if they offer outside opinion on his new park due to the loss of the worker earlier. I mean, let's face it, in your particular field, you're the top minds. Yes! You have no idea how computers work and you study ancient plant life. Clearly nobody would be more qualified. I like you. Both of you. I can tell instantly about people. It's a gift. Obviously he took that into consideration when he hired this guy. Dennis Nidri played by Wayne Knight before his heart decided he wanted to live, who we see is betraying John Hammond by handing over the dinosaur embryos to... evil dinosaur makers, I guess. In order to get more money. And you might notice one of the main problems with the first third of this movie. It focuses a great deal amount of time somehow hastily rushing a ton of exposition. On delivery, 50,000 more for each viable embryo. We are facing a $20 million lawsuit. There's a particular pebble in Marsh who represents my investors. 7 o'clock tomorrow night on the East Dock. 48 hours from now, if they're not convinced, I'm not convinced. It says that they insist on outside opinion. But it's alright. To account for that, they make the characters' motivations and story arcs disgustingly simple. Even down to dressing them in Care Bear colors so you can easily remember which one is which. 
Which one's Grant? Oh, he's the one in blue. Which one's Hammond? Oh, he's the one in white. Which one's the a-hole everyone will fall in love with until they realize he's just gonna do that one note for the rest of his life until they want to dig their brains out with a fork because he's so goddamn irritating? That's the darkly dressed evil one known as Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him! <laughs> Shoot him! Yeah, Goldblum, or the Wizard of Uz as I like to call him, wasn't a complete unknown before this flick, but he became a household name after it became a hit, and people fell in love with his performance. And at the time, it was kind of charming. People have never heard this kind of performance in a blockbuster film before. We're gonna conduct an experiment. It should be still, the car's bouncing up and down, but that's okay. So but once we discovered that he fell in love with his performance, even more than we fell in love with his performance, to a point where he never wanted to leave that performance, we do end up asking ourselves, how the fuck do we ever like this performance to begin with? Stop! There it is. Good luck getting this theme song out of your head. It will be in your brain for weeks or till you're dead. The full 50 miles of perimeter fence are in place. And the concrete moats and the motion sensor tracking systems. Donald's dear boy, relax. The only thing we don't have is security in case a storm comes or the power goes out. But we have this guy for that. So we good, we good. Spared no expense. I shut you down, John. <laughs> in 48 hours, I'll be accepting your apologies. So they arrive at the star attraction, Laura Dern mugs for the trailer, and we get our first look at Gertie. It's... it's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. Welcome... to Jurassic Park. They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. Really? That's the big teardropper line? Kind of random, isn't it? I mean, is that kind of like looking out over the herd and saying... They eat their own shit. They do eat their own shit. Hammond takes them to the visitor center to show them how they're made. Apparently it was done through the miracle of cloning. One of the many illegal processes I'm sure went into making this place a reality. DNA strand, like me, is a blueprint for building a living thing. And sometimes... Oh, spotlight fetish. I don't care if I'm the only director in the world who has it. I will make you a star. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. After biting a dinosaur, the mosquito would land on the branch of a tree and get stuck in the sap. The tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. Okay. Even if you were to buy this half-baked science that even Donatello would call a little suspicious, what are the chances of finding tons of mosquitoes not only millions of years old, not only have bitten every popular dinosaur to be marketed, but also all happen to get stuck in tree sap? Did they all happen to be in the same nest during the great sapalanche of Gajillion BC? Oh, well, it took all day, but I think we bit every popular and most marketable dinosaur known to man. That's why I love binge drinking with you guys. Mm, now let's rest our little tummies before we puke up whatever's left of them. Uh... Avalanche! A Avalanche is coming to destroy the town! Go get help. Oh, come on, man. I go can't move. No, I can't move. You need to go and get help. Come on, I mean, man. I'm gonna die. I'm You're gonna totally die. Gonna if he burst. wants to die, you if he wants to die, die right now, you want me to just explode in my move? I mean, is that what you want? Is that what you want from me? I mean, you want me to die? Fine, fine, fine. I'll go get help. I wonder if I'm a blood donor. We get to whimsical moment number I'm not even gonna bother counting as we see one of the baby dinosaurs being born. What species is this? It's a velociraptor. The bred raptors. Ah, so he can't identify the dinosaur from his trademark make kid wet pants speech even when he's holding the damn thing right in his motherfucking hands. Great job picking those top minds you were talking about there, Hammond. Spared no expense. 
This brings us to the projector room, where I'm sure Spielberg is projecting right now with how much his spotlight fetish is being fueled. Oh, so backlit. Oh, so illuminating. Oh, I could hump the white outline that it makes on the side of their heads. Oh. When we can charge anything we want, 2,000 a day, 10,000 a day, and people will pay it. This park was not built to cater only for the super rich. Everyone in the world has the right to enjoy these animals. Yeah, everyone should be allowed to fly their personal helicopters to their Hawaiian islands after getting storm insurance. We're looking after the little guy. But Goldblum, ah, uh, ah, uh, is not happy. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now <laughs> you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, wow. That was an excellent argument against the lost world. I mean, everything you said in there, pfft, I totally agree. You four are gonna have a spot of company out in the park. Grandpa! Kids! Oh good, the appetizers arrived. Now we can start our tour with the latest and greatest in high-tech ingenuity. It's an interactive CD-ROM! Holy shit, it's packed in CD-ROM! Oh my god, tell me it doesn't have X-Wing! Tell me it doesn't have X-Wing! <laughs> The appropriate information will be automatically selected. Welcome to Jurassic Park. What do they got in there, King Kong? Oh, come on, you could have worked in three more uhs into that sentence. What uh, they uh, got uh, in there, uh, King uh, Kong? But sadly, the tour doesn't seem to be going very well, as none of the dinosaurs show up to be seen. Okay, because Goldblum uses his traditional pickup tricks that always seem to get him women at TGI Fridays. Tiny variations. Uh, the, the orientation of the hairs on your hands. Hey, Alan, look at this. Um, the amount of blood distending your vessels, imperfections in the skin. Imperfections in the skin? Microscopic, microscopic. Oh, my God, it's like the new NBC sitcom, Rambles and Mumbles. One's a horny chaotician, the other's a giggling plant expert who doesn't want to get married but surprisingly wants kids for some reason. Together, they make the greatest couple nobody can understand or want to listen to since Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Rambles and Mumbles, coming soon to NBC. Wow, that was fast. They get out of the car and stumble across a sick triceratops, but Sattler is determined to figure out what's causing the sickness. Now, in reality, this scene serves no purpose to the plot apart from separating Sattler from the group. And let's be honest, it only exists so kids can giggle when he says this line. That is one big pile of shit. Your career in a nutshell. But Nidri has to hurry with those embryos or else the obvious video that everyone in the audience said was an obvious video Seriously, you couldn't crop that shot just a notch? Says the storm is coming and that the ship has to leave with everyone on it. Oh, look how lens flary it is. Oh, yeah. So he says the power's gonna go in and out, thinking he can make it back in time before anybody notices. But he gets lost, resulting in all the power shutting down and the cars getting stuck in the worst place possible. 